Greetings everyone, this is the first entry in a series of how-to videos on using our IRI product called DarkShield. DarkShield is a product IRI provides for the discovery and masking of sensitive information located in various sources, either in structured, semi-structured, or unstructured data formats. In this video, I'll discuss the searching masking of files of various types, and in future en video entries, I'll discuss the handling of NoSQL and relational database silos. So this is the IRI Workbench, a graphical user interface by which we can configure and execute jobs for IRI's various products like RoadGen, FieldShield, and DarkShield. As a prelude to configuring a DarkShield job, I will briefly discuss data classes and masking rules by which DarkShield searches for PAI and masks respectively. For those familiar with FieldShield, this should be a refresher since FieldShield also uses data classes and masking rules. This is the IRI library. This is per project based, uh, containing data class and classes and masking rules. If you see here, I already have some data classes created for this uh, project folder and some masking rules also. I have an email data class, a names data class, and a social security number data class. The emails data class uses a data matcher regex pattern. Besides uh, regex patterns, we could match on dictionary lookups, uh, open NLP, PyTorch, TensorFlow, uh, the natural language processing uh, AI models, uh, and these are this would be fuzzy matching, which would match on you know close to exact matching based on some uh, ranges that you provide. Here, Social Security Numbers also has a regex pattern to it that we've... All these regex patterns that I'm using are actually uh, patterns that are provided of our installation of Workbench. If you see here, these have come preloaded with your installation of Workbench. I have PIN for US, and I have email regex patterns. And of course, you can add your own as you like also. And these are my masking rules. This is the full list of masking rules. We have uh, redaction, which is character replacement, uh, non-reversible, and pseudonym replacement, replacing one value with a realistic value from a dictionary. And then we have encryptions and, and its sister decryption values. And we have hashing and some blur functions, a deletion. So now that I've briefly discussed data classes, masking rules, I'll talk about our Dark Shield wizards. Click here. So as you can see, uh, we have a wizard for files, another for NoSQL, and one uh, um, other for relational databases. The one we'll discuss in this video is the new file search masking job wizard. This is the first page of the wizard, and it is here we indicate the project folder we'll be working in, the name of the Darkshield job, and the subfolder name of our Darkshield job, which it will be residing in. We can also, in this page, indicate whether this will be a search, mask, or search mask operation. This is the second page, which provides some optional configurations if you wish to create and or, and report a detailed uh, information about the metadata. This is all optional, but here's the list of metadata you can report on. The third page is where we will select the location for the data class library we intend to use. I've selected the video demo project, which contains this uh, IRI library with the data classes that I had previously created. So once the library is chosen, we can review our available data classes and masking rules. These are my masking rules also. At this page, we'll have the option of deactivating or activating data classes individually, and we can also add or remove masking rules. So if I wanted to deactivate or activate the ones I wish to use for my project, I could. 
If I want to remove or add any new masking rules, I could. This next page in the wizard is for assigning masking rules to individual data classes. Having this level of granular control over how different PII types are protected is very useful if you have requirements for different levels of security. For example, a reversible masking operation may be required for names, but social security numbers have a higher level of security restri restrictions and require a masking operation that is non-reversible, like redaction. So I'll go ahead and set it up now. Set encryption to names, redaction to social security number, and encryption to emails. So moving on to the next page, it is here we can provide multiple data silos from which we will search for PII. When connecting to these file storage silos, a file storage connection is required. On this subpage, we can either create a new connection or reuse connections that were created in previous sessions. Here's some previous uh, connections I created. Currently, as of April 23, we support file storage types of the local file system and anything you can access from the file system, SharePoint Online, Amazon S3 Buckets, Azure Blob Storage, and Google Cloud Storage. When configuring a new connection, various credentials and parameters may be required depending on the silo type. If you look for file systems, pretty simple, just passing in directory, but if it was S3 buckets, requiring an access key, secret key, in your region, SharePoint, Azure Blob Storage, It is also here where we can identify the file types that should be handled. From the list, you can see Darkshield supports a large variety of file types. These include Excel, PDF, PowerPoint, Word, plain text, XML, JSON, image files, CSV, TSV, DICOM, Parquet, and fixed width files. So for demonstration purposes, I'll create the connection now. Okay, I've selected a directory where this files folder is located. Just to backtrack for a moment, you can actually add multiple data sources um, and multiple uh, data targets when you're doing a Dark Shield file job. Just thought I'd mention that. And also, you can uh, read from an S3 bucket and write to Azure Blob Storage or write, read from a file system local and write to some uh, SharePoint somewhere. Um, we are not limited to, you know, same source, same target. It can vary any combination. Next, we have another optional page where we can create file-specific filters for JSON, XML, CSV, TSV, and Excel files. These filters allow Darkshield to narrow the scope of the search for PII based on locational identifiers. At this point, we're almost finished. We'll need to indicate where the transformed mass output will be written to. If we intend to overwrite the original source and the target all we need is to have the target location be the same as the source, but if we want a mass copy, we would have to output to a different location. Take note that it is possible to read, um, as I mentioned before, from one file storage type and write to another. And I have a saved 
connection for output. I'll just go ahead and do that. So at this point we could have clicked finish but there's one final page that has some optional configurations. The configuration options on this page are recommended only for advanced users and are not included in the scope of this tutorial as they deserve an entire video of its own for discussion. So finally I'll click finish then a dark shield job uh, with file extension of .dsc will be created. So if you like click on the DSC file, a form editor will open. That will allow you to review and edit configuration options of the job. Furthermore, at the bottom, um, there's a preview option that allows you to test your data classes and masking rules applied against some text provided inside the text box field. So. So hit preview. All right. So as you can see, it's been uh, format preserved encrypted upon the email. It's also obviously been found using the data classes. Finally, to execute our dark shield job, right click on the .dsc file. Go to the run as and select either search, search and mask, or masking job. Search job is just if you want to find and annotate where PII was located. Uh, mask is a job that you could follow an annotation job, where then consume those annotations and do a masking in a second pass. Or, or the most popular is just a search and mask job, where you do a search and mask in one pass. So I'll go ahead and do a search and masking job. So these are the results files that log what was found in MAST. This is just some JSON that's produced by the Dark Shield API. And then to demonstrate the masking performed upon, I'll go ahead and open up a PDF here. Here's the original PDF. John Doe, got some social security numbers in here. And here is another PDF, the masked output. As you can see, John Doe has been encrypted. The social security number has been redacted. We can open up Word next. So we got a Word document here with Jane Johnson and John Doe inside. Here's the masked output. Jane Johnson has been encrypted. John Doe has been encrypted. Here's a PowerPoint, got some emails, got some names and social security numbers. All right, this is the masked output. You can see the emails have been encrypted. And here the names and social security numbers have both been black box uh, redacted. This is because this is an image and by default images are black box uh, redacted when masked. It is configurable though to do character replacement. It's a more advanced option though. Just to quickly go through some others, here's a medical fire JSON document. This is the given family name and it's been format preserved encrypted. This is the original. And 
as you can see. The masked output was format preserved encrypted, so it was just uh, scrambled characters, but had the preserved the uppercase and lowercase and the character length. Then there's Excel. Let's see if I can open up side by side. Okay, so as you can see, this is the masked output. Names have been format preserved and encrypted, along with emails. So this is uh, the end of my tutorial for Dark Shield for handling uh, files. Thank you, and we'll talk again in the next century.